Hello, I'm Grant from Makers Vlog, and today, well, actually it was a few days ago, I got a comment on one of my videos, uh, the one specifically about um, 5G, and why it's so fast, and whether it's safe. And uh, the guy had a few points, and I didn't want to write a big blurb um, in the comments for it to read, because people just skim read these things really, don't they? So I thought I'd do a video just sort of touching on, on the points. And it's an interesting topic and I actually have an idea for um, an experiment. But um, I'll, I'll do that um, in another video. So uh, it was Dave Nooner, I believe I'm pronouncing that right. And he starts off by saying that, uh, first of all, he is FCC licensed. Now, um, I don't know which license. I'm assuming he's maybe talking about amateur radio. Um, but I had a quick look on the FCC web page and there's tons of licenses so i don't know man i don't know which one you're in but okay fair enough i'm assuming you're you're saying that to say that you actually have some knowledge of radio communications which is fair and he is saying maybe it's not such a good idea to tell people microwaves are safe in any form and especially point them at them 24 7 365 days uh, i'm being a friend here okay now you may have missed the point of the video, the, the 5G transmitters, while they are technically in the microwave spectrum, they're not, they're, they're not the same wavelength as microwaves. And he goes on to say, uh, where is it? Uh, if you would just take a microwave oven to the end of your yard, open the door, bypass the safety, point it towards your house and turn it on for the next few months. Well, I do not think this would be a good idea. Well, for a start, it would be fine, okay? If you put a microwave at the end of your garden, open the door and let that um, microwave energy go towards your house, it, it would be stopped by your wall, okay? Microwaves struggle to get through objects. It wouldn't get very far. And as I, I believe I said this in the, in the last video, um, the, the power levels drop off um, in accordance with the inverse square law, which uh, I believe is four pi r squared. Basically, as the distance doubles from the transmitter at 100% efficiency, effectively, if it doubles, the power quarters. So if you say you have 100% efficiency at one meter, that that power is 100 watts at one meter. At two meters, it would be 25 watts. Okay, that's how quickly it drops off. Okay, so it does drop off very, very quickly, again, which is why a microwave is contained. Now... His point is that the transmitters would be up there all the time, blasting radiation, or well, EMF, out all the time. And it's a fair concern, however, it's a different frequency to your microwave. It's going back to that earlier thing, people heard, oh, it's in the microwave range, microwave heats up my food, therefore it's going to heat me up. It's not, it's a different wavelength. Strictly speaking, it's millimeter wave frequency. So the wavelength of the um, RF in your microwave is a about that big-ish. In fact, I'll link, there's a video um, done by Electroboom where it actually showed how you could see the length of the wavelength in the in the microwave by using uh, uh, like ink that reacts to heat. Um, and yeah, they're, they're about that length and they can pass through things quite easily. So they can pass through your body very easily. That's part of the reason how they're able to heat things up. It's, it's part of their job, as it were. However, the millimeter wave, which 5G is going to be using, is, as it sounds, it's millimetres, is very, very small. And as such, it can't go through us easily. It can't go through walls easily. It can't go through windows easily. It really struggles to get through objects. And in fact, there is a whole um, research area around stopping people interfering with the 5G signals, essentially. That, you know, you answer your phone. My phone's, I went to reach for my phone there. My phone's there recording this. Um, you answer your phone and say the base station's over there somewhere, your head would effectively be blocking the signals. Whereas currently, um, they're much lower frequency, they're in the UHF spectrum. The wavelengths are long enough that they can pass through your body very easily and get to the um, signal tower. Thank you. Now you might be thinking, well, if they're passing through me, and the whole reason that microwaves are potentially dangerous is because they pass through things and eat them up, why isn't your phone dangerous because it's it's heating up your body? And that is an area of research. But the gist is, it's because the power is low enough, okay? It's not necessarily the fact that these uh, radio waves are going through you, that are, that are going through the, the meat in your 
um, microwave or your food, whatever you're putting in there, it's not so much that the radio waves are going through them that's heating them up, it's the power levels. It's because they're at you know 700 watts, 800 watts, up to a kilowatt of power, and it's contained in a very confined area. Okay, if you drop that down to the same power level as your phone, which I think maximum, maybe two watts, if you're lucky, um, it wouldn't heat anything up because the power just isn't there to do it. Okay, so yes, the next thing he says is that they have stated that they will not do studies because this will slow down the deployment of 5G. So you now have a choice, uh, do some research and then maybe recommend putting microwaves on every block pointed at children's homes. Or do not. Just my opinion, sir. I do not want to sign Ming. All right. Um, just concerned that there is not enough research being done and it's not safe. Uh, think and research for yourself. Now, for a start, I am hurt that you think that these videos are not researched. Okay. All of them fucking are. In fact, here is a few research papers. Okay. If people want from now on were applicable, I will... Um, put links to the research papers in, in the descriptions. The reason I haven't so far is because a lot of these are got from a site called IEEE and it's um, where most research papers are published. But if you don't have an account or you don't have a university account, you have to pay for them. Um, and so essentially I didn't. Now I get PDFs of these, um, but they're not mine to distribute. So I can't share them with you because they're not mine. Um, if anyone wants in the in the uh, 5G one, um, I am really curious about this area and there are some implications coming out of uh, a few of these research papers. If people want, I may write up my own research paper and I that way I can then share it with yourselves. But I mean, don't expect that until like oh, next year, maybe, if even. Um, now I said that they're, they're not doing research on 5G because it'll slow down deployment. Now they are. Basically, they are doing research. I think what he means here is that they aren't holding off on 5G, waiting for the results of the research. They're just going ahead with it, but there is research happening. In fact, here are, that's not one, that's, that's post-quantum computing, that's a different thing. Um, yeah, I've got three here that are printed out. 5G wireless telecommunication expansion, public health and environmental implications. That's one. 5G wireless communication and health effects, a pragmatic review based on available studies regarding 6 to 100 gigahertz. That one is very good. Definitely recommend reading. And this one is generic to radio frequency in general. It's radio frequency electromagnetic fields, exposure assessment in indoor environments, a review. Again, good one. Um, that's part of the thinking for my uh, experiment that I may be doing, but we'll talk about that later. So there are research papers being done. Um, these to say that there's no research happening is just flat out wrong. Um, there's research being done all over the place because people are concerned about this. And so scientists want to check it and make sure. And generally the consensus from uh, from these three, and I think I read about five or six, um, the general consensus is that there is an issue, but the issue is power. And it's not to do with 5G in itself, it's to do with the amount of devices that we have um, that was part of the reason why um, that one, the radio frequency electromagnetic field exposure in indoor environments, that's why I dug that one out, because they're saying that, that what 5G represents is a lot more smart devices. Smart devices everywhere, all using RF to communicate, because it's, it's then, strictly speaking, faster than having a cable. And so everything's going to be wireless. And that means there's going to be more power and if you remember before I said the power is the issue, that, that that's what causes damage, that there's going to be more background radiation, more power just in the air. And the current recommendation is that the power level, just ambient in the air, should not, should not exceed one watt per meter squared. That's, that's the consensus. And we're currently well below that. However, there's a couple of studies, in particular um, in those papers, that have said that actually they think that this value is too high, that one watt per square meter um, if we reach that, it would be damaging to people. And in fact, that, that level should be dropped. So that's the current consensus with, with that one, that, that actually the power that they think is safe is, is potentially too much. So, and that's going to be, actually, I'll just touch on this very briefly. That's going to be the basis of the experiment I was thinking of. I was thinking of getting something, three somethings, 
I know I haven't worked out the details yet, and essentially have one exposed to no radiation as much as possible, have it in a completely Faraday environment, observe the effects, have one in as the control, just in ambient background um, RF as we, as we see, observe the effects, and then have one that's subjected to RF to the one watt per square meter power level, essentially the safety limit as it stands today and see um, and see what happens and see whether there is actually a measurable effect. Uh, loads of different ways you could tweak off that and change it, but that's that's sort of the idea that I'm toying with. Um, and I'm talking with the, the university at the minute to see if I can potentially get to do that. But that's, that's the gist, essentially. 5G is not going to kill you. It is not microwave, it's millimeter wave, even though, strictly speaking, it is in the microwave bracket, but it's very much different. It doesn't go through you like microwaves do. And it is not the frequency, it is the power levels. And 5G is no more dangerous than 4G. And just as a, as a last thing before I go, I would hesitantly argue that 5G, the higher frequencies, are actually safer than the lower frequencies because they struggle to get through objects, okay? They can't go through your body very easily. They reflect off, they can't refract around either. So if you think about it, if the power level rises of them, it's a lot easier to stop them from injuring you if they ever got to that power. They would need a lot more power than what the likes of you know, lower frequencies would need to actually start essentially microwaving you. They would need to be very, very high power. But it would be a lot easier to block those signals. Like you go inside your house, no signals. Okay. Now that would, of course, require that you get rid and stop using all of the lower frequencies, but I think that's potentially possible. Um, now this is just my observations, like pure theory. I have nothing to base this on. This is just looking at the, the facts and figures and making a guess. Um, I'll maybe see if I can test it in some way, shape or form at a later date. But yes, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, I have um, a Discord channel. Um, I've mentioned that before. It's down below. You can go in there and chat to me. I'm usually on there. So yeah, thanks for watching.